This is Dream Power Radio, the place where your dreams turn into reality. Here is your host, Debbie Specter Weissman. Hello, 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 and welcome to Dream Power Radio. This is the place where we talk about dreams, both daytime and nighttime dreams, and how you can use them to make the internal shift to a life you love and rediscover the truth of who you really are. Well, here's a word that we bandy about a lot, soul. The word has different meanings to different people. Some see it as spirit. Some see it as a hidden part of ourselves. Some believe it's eternal. Some believe it dies when we die. And some aren't even sure it exists at all. But one person who does and who believes in accessing it is key to our growth and self-actualization is here with me today. Philip Montrose is a pioneer and innovator in spiritual growth and healing. Along with his wife, Jane, Philip has spent the past three decades helping people live purposeful and fulfilling lives. And they're the authors of a number of books, including The Ultimate Paradigm Shift and their latest one, The Loving Power of Your Soul, a guidebook for realizing your true potential. Welcome to Dream Power Radio, Philip. Great to be with you, Debbie. Oh, well, thank you. Well, Philip, before you and Jane became healers, you both experienced burnout in different careers. Mm-hmm. What was it that made you realize that there was a way out and that there was a more... <laughs> Fortunately, there was a way out. Yeah, what starts off as maybe an interesting uh, occupation or way to, to make a living, to try things out. In my case, it was, became a teacher, educator, Jane, my wife, partner, Jane Montrose, an architect. It was, it was satisfying for a certain amount of time. And I think a lot of people will relate to this. But at a certain point, it really isn't what you're here to do. It just feels like you're almost going through the motions. And in my case, it just sort of felt like it had you know, le- less and less energy. And for Jane, she actually burnt out and became chronically fatigued from it you know so some people have to go through an illness or just a real suspension of it and to pause midlife transition sometimes or crisis to say hey what am I really here to do and and that sent us on, on a lot of spiritual seeking in the different modalities different religions different groups to find out the truth of who we are and, and where we are in the world and how we can make a difference you maintain that true healing comes holistically, and that it's not just a matter of curing physical illnesses, but also dealing with the mind and the spirit. So what makes this an effective way for successful outcomes? Well, it's interesting, Debbie, as you know, and as people listening know, we have different intelligences. It used to be, especially growing up, I'm in my second half of life, as people are visually seeing this can recognize. It, we used to think it was just sort of an IQ mental intelligence, you know, way, way back when. We now know there may be a dozen intelligences and most primarily physical intelligence, how you use your body your emotional intelligence, how you recognize your feelings and and relate to other people. And of course, your mental intelligence, your ideas, your learning, your thinking, and your spiritual intelligence, you know, how you relate to the world at large, sort of the bigger picture. That's sort of an intelligence in itself. So these four intelligences are actually used by the soul as raw materials in a Gurdjieff Spensky group, one of the a spiritual group where I met my wife, Jane Montrose, years ago, uh, they said something rather profound. I didn't really know what it meant, but I knew it was profound. Have you ever heard something you go, wow, there's, that's awesome. I'm not sure what it means, but you're kind of goosebumps feeling. So it was this sentence, functions are not consciousness. And that sounds rather obscure, Functions are not consciousness. So our functions are those intelligences, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. Those are things how we function. And our consciousness is what is kind of watching that, what we came here for, our soul's plan that can translate into a purpose. If you decide to go that far, you have free will, whether you want to do your purpose or not. So the functions you function hopefully more intentionally, more soulfully, more creatively, more lovingly. So this brings me back to the soul. How do you define the soul and, and, and how do we access it? 
Yes. Well, the soul is that eternal spark of God, that peace of God. I, I recognize that as many people do, as you said, there's different ways people view this. And it's since it's not a more material, physical, scientifically measurable directly item, <laughs> scientific quantity, there's a lot of uh, unknowns, a lot of possibilities uh, and questions. But it really is about opening your heart, which is a gateway to the soul. And, that, and a lot of this has been found in, in traditional religions, as we know. And when you do that, experientially even now and you can do it at any time you don't have to wait till a beautiful incident to open your soul to a sunrise or sunset or the birth of a child or something or a tragedy a crisis where you have to be ultra present you can do it at any moment like right now and you just feel yourself being here living your life which is it seems odd that you have to make an effort or intention to awaken where do you awaken from, from kind of a sleep or slumber to being present to living your life? And one of the, the aspects of accessing your soul is love. So yes. how does love work into all of this? Love is that way of being that opening your heart to your dreams and connecting with everyone and everything and feeling that we're all sort of on this journey together, although we're individualized and we're all unique. And we recognize and honor that as well as honoring that we're all together and part of things. It's interesting, I was hearing about a study that when people are kind, uh, they become happier. It's sort of built into us. You might not know that if you turned on the, the nightly news, but the cable station, but it does actually make us feel better and healthier as well, okay. opening our heart uh, to connecting with ourselves and everyone and feeling uh, love is not love that alters when it alterations finds. Oh, no, it's, it is an ever-fixed mark. That's uh, a Shakespeare sonnet. Uh, I think that's a good description, too. Well, you know, you in your new book, you talk about a very interesting way of uh, realizing this, which is the, the pointing finger test. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? The loving power of your soul. Yes, yeah, it's uh, Generally, Debbie, and as people know, if you say, you know, point to yourself, most people point to their heart. They don't point to their head. And that's sort of a sense like I felt it in my heart, my heart of heart. There are many phrases like that. Yeah, I, I didn't have the heart for it or my heart was in it. Uh, and it, we're sort of telling ourselves often rather unconsciously, it's just sort of embedded in the language of who we are at a deeper level. We are heart-centered beings, and uh, that's the spiritual being having the human experience, and the heart knows that. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought that was really interesting. You know, I did that. Of course, yeah, of course I go to my heart. It makes sense. <laughs> of course you do, yes. But, you, you know, you, it, it's very interesting to have those kinds of tools to make you realize things that you kind of know, but you don't know. Right. It's sort of right beneath the surface, sort of subconsciously and, uh, and somewhat hidden in plain view as well. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a bit not more now about the different modalities that you use in your practice uh, with your wife. And one of them is visualization. Uh, how does that help your clients when, when you're treating them? Right. Well, let me give you kind of a two for a two for one here that uh, will kind of I've realized that sometimes if you think things through, you can keep adding things into communications to make them richer and more interesting, which I'm about to do. What is he talking about? <laughs> and so uh, in The Loving Power of Your Soul, our new book, we have six ways of connecting with the soul. And one is a visualization, very simple one of going to a mountaintop or going to a perch, or you can even say the top of the world, whatever that is for you. And that could be a visual or a knowing or a sensing of it. And from there, things change. So at the bottom of the mountain, we call that sort of being in the mud, being stuck. So when you're irritated or frustrated, you feel like you're kind of stuck in the mud, right? Right. Can you absolutely. remember, you know, just being frustrated about something? Absolutely, yes. Can you sense it sort of being like in the mud? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> What's that like for you, that kind of muddy frustration? It's stuck. It's that feeling of being stuck. Right. Um, not being able to move and you also not even know where to move or how to move right so the answer is the visual 
and imagery is very powerful. The language of the soul it understands visually very quickly. A picture has, is worth a thousand words, right? You imagine now, and maybe the listener or watcher can do this if they're in a place to do it safely, going to a top of a mountain, a wonderful perch, just your light, you're floating, you're in this wonderful 360 degree view, air is perfect, temperature is just right, view is magnificent. You have that panoramic vision and, and knowingness connected with everything and everyone. What's that like for you, Debbie? It's being able to see a different perspective and a perspective that at, could be limitless, but it's vast and it shows a lot of possibilities. Right. So from that view, if you kind of sense back to the frustrated, muddy, stuck you, what's it like now from, you know, kind of the seeing it from the uh, it's the, real, the high perspective, it, the big it, picture. It's the realization that there is a solution out there. It doesn't necessarily give me the solution, but it gives me the possibility that it's there. And knowing that there is a possibility is uh, a lot more enlightening than feeling that there's no way out. Yes, possibility thinking we sometimes call it so remember i said we're going to add on we're layering things we just layered a visualization a connecting with the soul which is atop the mountain a healing i'm going to do kind of another added element here because it just sort of fits in naturally i think i feel and that's our our mantra called the miracle reframe people tend to like this it's a special mantra that we was downloaded to us from on high wherever you get these things the creative realm and it goes like this anything is possible and miracles are happening now if you say that debbie what's that like for you anything is possible and miracles are happening now that it, again I, I bring myself back to that area of possibilities and and that solutions I know that there is a is a solution to whatever it is that is, is frustrating me or keeping me stuck, keeping me in that mud, that I don't have to feel like I have to be in that low place. Yeah. It's very uplifting, hopeful, inspirational, it sounds like. And that's the kind of things that, that we experience and people experience. We call that the miracle reframe, that download mantra anything is possible and miracles are happening now. It just seems to have some sort of magical elixir alchemy to it. And it, and it just makes the world a different place. And it really probably is in some ways more objectively true than being in the mud and thinking we have no possibilities or very little possibilities of being stuck. And that brings to mind just the role of language in our lives to begin with. And also the fact that we are all energetic beings and that, you know, those, those low words that like you say in, in the book, you know, low words that, you know, anger, mm -hmm. sadness or whatever, you mm -hmm. know, keep us in a field of low energy. And like saying that mantra that you just had raises our energy and puts us mm -hmm. in a higher perspective. And I think that's, that's, that's one of the ways we access healing. Yes, that's a good description of what we wrote about it in, in the Loving Power of Your Soul book and keeping your vibrations up, keeping your energy high without putting your head in the sand, the ostrich effect, because you don't want to ignore there's some very challenging, terrible things coming to light now, as we know, living in this period. And the solution is that, you know, going to the mountaintop, we have other ways of connecting with the soul that we described, just being more in that energetic state so you can be more alight be a receptor, be a transmitter, be a beacon in your daily life to live your best and help other people to be in a, in a resourceful place. Well, we're going to talk more about ways of accessing our soul with Philip Montrose, but we have to take a short break now and we'll be right back. When is a car not a car? When it shows up in your dreams. Cars are one of the most common dream symbols. If you don't know why you're dreaming about cars or any image, it can leave you confused or scared. But that dream could be a solution to a pressing problem. Or an insight into a solution that's been bugging you for years. Go to my website and sign up for a complimentary discovery session. And I'll help you understand why a dream is a terrible thing to waste. Go to thedreamcoach.net 
for more information. Welcome back to Dream Power Radio with your host, Debbie Specter Weissman. Yes, welcome back to Dream Power Radio. I'm your host, Debbie Specter Weissman, and we're talking about accessing our soul with Philip Montrose. Well, Philip, it seems like a lot of these practices, like, you know, saying that mantra you just told us about before the break and, you know, doing that little visualization involve your clients asking themselves questions. So is this something that a person can do by themselves or do they need a coach for this to be effective? Well, the miracle reframe that saying that anything is possible and miracles are happening now, it's that's pretty easy to do. The way we learn this, Debbie, we, my wife and partner, Jane Mountrose, just so people don't, you know, who's he talking about? Uh, years ago, uh, a healer taught us sort of a soul-centering version, which we have written about in the book, like One Way to Connect with the Soul. And we started doing that regularly as a meditation. And after a while, it becomes a living meditation where you're more in that energy. Not always perfectly. It doesn't like it doesn't mean that I don't kind of lose it at times and lose my way, but I know how to get find my way quickly, <laughs> recover, be resilient, uh, be more anti-fragile, as it's sometimes called. And so the idea is to learn some of these simple ways to connect with your soul, maybe meditatively at first, do some of the exercise that we write about in the book, and um, practice it, and then it just becomes a way of life. It's it. Now, that being said, there can be very deep, difficult, challenging things, which we probably maybe almost all of us need help with those really deep, thorny, challenging things. So that would be a good thing to take some, uh, to be with someone. And we help people individually, Jane and I, and, or just someone you trust or can connect with to get through that too. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk a bit about how you help your, your clients access their soul for being able to not only have self-actualization, but actually deal with, actual ailments or illness yes. or stresses they're having. So can you give us, you know, an example of that? Yes. Yeah, we have so many examples and, and they can be just, to me, they're very mind blowing. Like when they happen, it's kind of like, what? No, you, you mean it? Well, just for example, lady, and sometimes this happens and in, in we have a coaching and healing live training program. And so we do practice and we show people the many techniques we know or have developed ourselves and they practice them. So this was, so she's practicing and sometimes it's not physical things, although those are more dense. So they may not move, although psychologically and what created them often is can be found out very clearly, but sometimes they do. In this case, she had a, a sore uh, leg, shin and knee calf area. So I asked, I asked uh, Mary, what, you know, how long have you had that? And, you know, five years, and, you know, how painful or strange is it? She goes around to five, usually one out of, out of 10, five, maybe just to give a kind. Okay. So we do the situation where we connect with the soul could be like going to the mountaintop. We have other ways to do it. So she's in that energy as she's connecting sort of in the mud, the, this was a variation on this. Okay, we do that and see what happens, you know. Okay, how's it going, Mary, now? You, it's a round of a spiritual kinesiology. We call it a healing with the soul, another kind of healing modality we've developed. She goes, I'm fine. I feel light. I, and so how's the pain? She goes, it's gone. So you say you've had it every day for five years and it's gone now? She goes, yeah. And I just feel lighter. I feel good now. And, you know, I, I realized some things about my diet, too, that I've kind of got clear about maybe too much salt and de being dehydrated and so forth. So I can change that. And she was good to go. That is amazing. And, and how long did that take for it to happen? Ten minutes. That fast. Yeah, it's pretty quick because there's a saying, a Vedic ancient Hindu text saying that things, the same things from a different perspective are completely different. Mm -hmm. So from atop the mountain, to use our previous example, things that are very different from when you're down in the mud, that, that sore leg is very different in the mud than it is from the mountaintop. And when you bring that energy, it, it seems to realign you. Now, that being said, I don't mean to say all things and all conditions are immediately resolved because they're not, but 
but there are a lot of times and they're usually not physical. It's usually more emotional. Like, you know, I was betrayed by my friend seven years ago. I meditated every day and, you know, nothing. And I do this and now I forgive her and I feel fine. Those kind of stories. So you're right. Seeing it from a different perspective makes all the difference. Right. You can say it, but just saying it, as we know, you can just say, oh, you should you should forgive her. You know that it's, it's helpful. You know, you should stop smoking. You know, it's help. You know, that's of course they know that. <laughs> of course, we know that. But from a different perspective, then we do know that. And this also brings to mind the idea that, you know, what we will call physical ailments may not actually be physical ailments or, or I mean, they are. But I mean, that the source of it is not a physical condition. Right. So the energy field, and I don't know how many, how people, you know, it's like the idea of the seven chakras or more, even in layers of the energy field and the meridians and all those things, they, they refer to the kind of deeper, more invisible matrix of who we are at a deeper level. And so from those, usually the distortions start at, at the more spiritual disconnected level, like feeling uh, alienated or lost from source. And that makes its way into the weakest links due to our particular body, genetics, karma, et cetera, to show up as an injury, an illness, a disease, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So once we trace and track it back, oh, I see the separation. I see where the fear is. I see the source of it. We can heal it from the source, maybe by the source, you know, one could say. Mm -hmm. and one of the other uh, modalities I would say you use is uh, breath work also. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, we like breathing as a, a deep relaxation and a kind of a punctuation. We have a simple process, which maybe it just takes a minute. I could share it if you want. A, a simple energy technique. Do we have a minute to share? Sure. It? Okay, so we call it the reset process, resetting yourself, like rebooting. You know, if you ever had a computer, it doesn't work and you reboot it and it works fine, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we added on to other techniques like holistic EFT tapping or, or other, the spiritual kinesiology. And simply it's tapping across the top of your head. So it's integrating the left and right brain. So it's not only physically balancing you, it's also communicating to the different levels of your multidimensional awareness and you breathe and you may have an issue like, you know, your frustration that you were having before you could do that and just, and then you, the second part, and then you breathe the breathing question preferably through the nose, at least inhale, could slowly exhale. And then you, you tap across the heart, integrating whatever you're trying to integrate into the heart. And then you breathe. And what does a person get from that? Well, it, it's a resetting. So it depends what you're doing it at. So if you're doing it on an issue, you get a healing if you do it on just sort of more awareness, it's a balancing technique. It's a very easy, but quite profound balancing. The best thing to do is to try it and find out for yourself that we're very experiential kind of things like they need the work and be pragmatic. Although our focus is quite spiritual, kind of bringing the soul into a pragmatic, uh, practical way of putting it into your life and going through the veil, piercing the veil. So we we'll see more clearly what we're here to do going forward. Right. If we're ready for that. Right. And I want to go back to what you just were, were demonstrating, which is, you know, tapping or EFT. And yes, your, your way of doing it is different from what we would call like traditional tapping, would you say? Yes. The standard EFT emotional freedom technique tapping, which started in 1995 with Gary Craig, many people do what are like scripts saying things that they tell the persons receiving the healing what might be healing like affirmations like and even Gary Craig said there's a limit to that it can be good for teaching but it doesn't go for the underlying issue what we like to focus on Debbie is going deeper and sort of targeting exactly what's going on in that sense it's very precise and how do you find out? Well, th through some questionings, and, and you may need some help of someone who could kind of be a good sounding board or have a sense of this to go deeper or get a training from us or someone to how to do it. And once you know what it is, then like the lady who had the sore leg, you know, once she knows precisely for her, her in her language, you know, even though I feel like I can't move forward or whatever the precise 
then you do the, in this sense, the EFT tapping the, the pressure points with the, that phrase, then it's a lock and key, and then it works very profoundly and holistically. And then you do that reset process, integrating your left and right brain, tapping atop your head, breathing, and then tapping your heart, integrating it into your heart at a deeper level. Mm-hmm. And that's how that one works. You know, very often when I read about practitioners, techniques, and programs, they emphasize all the good that those programs are going to do. You also caution, though, that even though you have a very high success rate with what you do, there are reasons why it may not work. So what could be some of those reasons? Right. Yes. And I certainly don't want to say that myself, or I think anyone would say that, that in fact, if they're honest, that they can heal or help people 100% of the time. Some of the factors is, is the person ready? Are you the right person to help? There may be a sense of timing. It may take time for to see the results. Some things may be a karmic thing that you're sort of here to deal with, the, 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 this shoulder for this lifetime to live with for some reason, you know, and the handicaps and <clears throat> maybe genetic problems or, or illnesses or, or diseases that can't be you know, cured or changed. I can understand that. We're getting toward the end of our discussion. Is there a final thought you'd like to leave for with our audience? Well, yes. I would say, first of all, I would definitely learn the the soul centering because it, it's a real game changer, really gets you on your path and, and aligns you with your soul's plan, what you're really here to do. And one of the ways maybe to do that is just take your next step, open your heart, sit and say, what's my next step? going forward for my highest potential, my soul's fulfillment. And Philip, how can people find out more about you and your work? I want to offer a free gift to your audience, Debbie. It's a spiritual healing kit, and it has an excerpt of our new book, The Loving Power of Your Soul, and a holistic EFT tapping video and some resources. It's a nice little free download and and a shortened URL, an easy-to-remember URL, to find the spiritual healing kit is tinyurl.com slash spiritual dash kit, tinyurl.com slash spiritual dash kit. And our website, which is very extensive for free downloads and videos and articles and many trainings, is getting through getting thru.org, getting through.org. Oh, that's wonderful. And I will put that uh, link in the show notes so people can, Great. they hear it and can't remember it. They can go to the show notes and get it, get it that way. Well, Philip, thank you so much for being on Dream Power Radio today. My pleasure, Debbie. Hey, we've been speaking with holistic spiritual healer and author Philip Montrose. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. If so, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Until next time, this is Debbie Spector Weissman saying, sweet dreams, everybody. You've been listening to Dream Power Radio with your host, Debbie Spector Weissman. For more information on Debbie or to sign up for her newsletter, go to dreampowerradio.com. This has been Dream Power Radio.